The spotlight is always on the New York Mets, playing in the biggest city in America, and they haven't enjoyed the same success as their crosstown rivals. Their ownership and front office have also come under attack over the years. And today, let's pour salt all over that wound. These are the worst contracts the Mets have signed in recent memory. When you think of the Mets and contracts, the first one that comes to mind is Bobby Bonilla. He had played with the Mets from 1992 to 1995, bounced around a bit, then was traded back to the Mets in 1999. He only played 60 games that year. His average plummeted all the way down to 160, only hit four homers, a 579 OPS and 49 OPS plus. To top it off, apparently, during the NLCS, he was in the clubhouse playing cards with Ricky Henderson. The Mets were done with him, so they cut him, still owing him $5.9 million. Instead of getting paid up front, he struck a deal. The payments would be deferred with an 8% interest rate, $1.2 million every year, starting in 2011 and ending in 2035. This would total $29.8 million. Thus, Bobby Bonilla Day was born. July 1st, every year, he gets his money and will do so for the next 12 years. Number 6. Kaz Matsui. Some guys that come from Japan become stars, others not so much. But after Ichiro and Godzilla came over and played so great, Matsui had high expectations. He was a consistent 300 hitter and a gold glove winner for almost 10 years, and he signed a 3-year, $20.1 million deal with the Mets before the 2004 season. He homered on the first pitch he saw, finishing the game 3 for 3, but that was about as good as it got. He played 114 games in 2004, batting 272, but only had a 727 OPS and an 89 OPS plus. He also committed 23 errors at shortstop. He only played 87 games in 2005, hitting 255 with an OPS of 652, and in 2006 he only played 38 games with the Mets, batting 200 and a 505 OPS. The Mets shipped him off to Colorado, where in his 32 games, he hit 345 and had an OPS of 896. I'm sure Mets fans love to see that. Number 5. Luis Castillo. He was traded to the Mets during the 2007 season, and in 50 games, he hit 296, stole 10 bags, and had a 742 OPS. The Mets gave him a 4-year, $25 million deal, and it started off as a mess. He spent 2008 mostly injured or benched, only playing 87 games, his average dropping from 301 in 2007 down to 245, his OPS dropping 61 points. The 2009 season saved this contract a little bit. He played 142 games and hit over 300, but that season will always be remembered for the drop pop fly that turned a win into a loss just like that. The Mets tried to trade him over the offseason but couldn't find any takers. He would not be able to continue his success from 2009, and early in 2010, he was put on the DL with foot problems. He got into turmoil with his teammates. He started complaining about his playing time, and he only played 86 games with a 235 average and 604 OPS, even worse than his 2008 season. He had fallen out of favor in New York, even getting booed during spring training, and he was released shortly after in 2011. The Mets had to eat the last $6 million of his deal, and he never made it back to the majors. Number 4. Oliver Perez in 2006, he joined the Mets midseason for their playoff push, and he was bad. 7 starts, 638 ERA. But in 2007 and 2008, he was a very solid pitcher, starting 63 games and posting a 391 ERA over that span, and the Mets gave him a 3-year, $36 million contract. This was a big waste of money. In 2009, he started 14 games and posted an ERA close to 7, and it didn't get any better in 2010. He started 7 games but was sent to the bullpen, only appearing in 17 games, an 0-5 record and a 6.80 ERA. The Mets still owed him money for one more season, but they figured they were better off without him on the mound. They released him, but that was not the end of Oliver Perez. He would never start another game again, but he would resurface in 2012 and pitch all the way through 2022, appearing in 497 games with a 3.56 ERA. Not a bad second act. Number 3. Jed Lowry Leading up to 2019, Lowry had a decade of being up and down. When he put in a full season, he was generally pretty good, and that was especially true in his last two years in Oakland. In 2017 and 2018, he averaged 155 games, a 272 batting average and 804 OPS. In 2018, he even had 23 homers and 99 RBI, earning his only All-Star bid and getting MVP votes. The Mets were impressed, signing him to a two-year, $20 million deal, and right out of spring training, he hurt his knee, and he would be out until the last month of the season. He never started a game, he never played the field, he never even had a hit. He came up eight times, walked once, struck out four times. Apparently, Lowry wanted to have surgery to fix his knee after that season, but the Mets said no, even threatening to void his contract. Because of that, he missed the 2020 season. His contract with the Mets was done. He had his surgery and went back to Oakland to play two more seasons. 
$20 million for nothing more than one walk. Number two, Ioannis Cespedes. He came to the Mets for their 2015 run to the World Series, and he was awesome. In 57 games, he hit 17 home runs and had an OPS of 942. The Mets naturally re-signed him for three years, giving him $75 million. And in 2016, he was great. 132 games, 31 homers, 86 RBI, 280 average with an 884 OPS. He was an all-star and finished eighth for MVP. He opted out of his contract and agreed to a four-year, $110 million deal. And that's the one the Mets regret. He had hamstring issues in 2017, only playing half the season, but still being productive when he was on the field. 17 homers and an 892 OPS. In 2018, he started off great again, but needed surgery on both of his heels, ending his season after just 38 games. Then he breaks his ankle on his ranch, missing the entire 2019 season, and he comes back in 2020 for the last year of his contract. He played in eight games, hit 161, a 622 OPS, and then he decides to opt out for the season, as was his right to do in the COVID-shortened year. For $110 million across four seasons, Cespedes only played 127 games, hit 28 homers, and had an OPS of 852. This sounds like a pretty decent season, but when you realize it's over the course of four seasons, and the Mets paid over $100 million for it, that's where it kinda goes south. Number 1. Jason Bay other than Bonilla, I think this is the one that everyone thinks about. And yeah, it was pretty bad. He won Rookie of the Year in 2004, and for four and a half seasons, he was the star of a bad Pirates team. He got traded to Boston in 2008, and played out his contract in 2009, having arguably his best year. 36 homers, 119 RBI, 921 OPS, 7th place for MVP. A guy like that was going to garner top dollar, and the Mets scooped him up. This was a four-year, $66 million deal. Before this, if nothing else, Jason Bay was a very reliable player. Between 2005 and 2009, he averaged 154 games. In 2010, he would only play 95, crashing into a wall in July, giving himself a concussion. His production wasn't very good either, only hitting 6 homers and his OPS dropped to 749, just barely above a league average player. It would get worse. In 2011, he played 123 games, but his OPS dove down to 703, and it would just continue to slide. In 2012, he broke a rib while diving, and ran into another wall which gave him another concussion. He played just 70 games, hit 165, a 536 OPS, and his OPS Plus dove all the way down to 48. Both sides agreed to terminate the contract early, and he would play one more year with the Mariners. Over three seasons, he played 288 games, that's an average of 96 per year. He hit 26 homers, that's 10 less than 2009 alone and he had a 687 OPS and 90 OPS plus, well below league average. For five seasons, this guy was a big star, and it's amazing how fast he fell off. You can blame the Mets, or you can blame him turning 30, but this wasn't worth anything near $16.5 million a year. That's all for this list. There were other guys that I left off, like Moises Alou. The Mets exercised his contract for the 2008 season, despite having an injury-riddled 2007 season and being 41 years old. And sure enough, he only played 15 games. Then you got James McCann. He looked like a budding star between 2019 and 2020. Then he signed a four-year, $40.6 million deal with the Mets, and his numbers plummeted. They were lucky to trade him to Baltimore this year. Jay Bruce also signed a three-year, $39 million contract before 2018, coming off a very good 2017 where he hit 36 homers, but he only had 9 homers in 94 games in 2018. He was part of the deal that brought Cano and Diaz from Seattle, so in the end, it wasn't that bad. Let me know what you think about this list, and if any other Met deal in recent memory comes to mind. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new here and want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.